Hello and welcome to our Magic Jelly Bean tutorial series. Today I'll be walking you through our GW1NSR tutorial. This tutorial describes the features and design resources of the GoIn GW1NSR4 FPJ device. The goal of this tutorial is to walk you through how to design and debug your own mini star projects. First thing we need to do is make sure you have GoIn EDA downloaded. You will be able to locate both GoIn EDA and the GoIn MCU development environment under the software tab on magicjellybean.org. Once you have the software installed, you will want to grab the Ministar GitHub project. You can access the GitHub page from the home page or by going to our demo section and clicking any of the demo project links. Once you're on the GitHub page, navigate to the main Ministar GitHub and click the green code button. This will allow you to download the entire repository and all of the files and projects you will need for all of our demos. Next, let's navigate to the GW1NSR demo doc. This will have step-by-step -step instructions on how to write a proper Verilog design, how to instantiate the IP cores in within the design, and how to use the GoIn IP core configuration tool to enable the SPI bus, UART, and GPIO IPs to control the SPI LCD display. We also want to install the Ministar USB driver, which can be located using the link within the demo doc under section 3.1.3. .3. Next, let's go ahead and open GoIn EDA, click File, New, and then choose FPGA Design Project. Go ahead and name your project. We use Test as an example here. The project will need a device. Make sure to select the correct version of the GW1 NSR device. Once the project is created, click File, New, and then choose Verilog File. When naming the file, make sure the module is consistent with the name of the file, as shown here. Now let's compile the Verilog code. You will locate the code needed for the .v file within the demo doc. Once you have the code compiled, it's time to go to the Process tab and then click Synthesize. Next, double-click Floor Planner to check your pinout. Since you are creating this project, there will be no .cst file created yet. Go ahead and create a new one. Click on the I.O. Constraints tab and make sure your pinout configuration is set up properly. Once you have checked that, save the configuration and then click Place and Route. After that, double click on Program Device from the Process tab. Click Program, Configure Device, and your board should be programmed successfully. If you have completed this correctly, you will see two flashing LEDs alternating. Next, let's try using the IP core generator to enable the on-chip hardcore's SPI peripheral to drive the LCD. Access the IP core generator by clicking the three colored cubes at the top of GoIn EDA. From there, open up Soft IP Core, Microprocessor System, and then click on the GoIn EMPU. Once you have the EMPU open, double click on GPIO, UR, and SPI to enable them. Once that's completed, click OK and add the generated file to your current project. Then click Synthesize. Next, we will be configuring the SPI, UR, and GPIO pins using the Floor Planner. Within Floor Planner, make sure that the I.O. type is LVCM OS33 to match the 3.3 volts which is required to drive the SPI chip. Once everything is set up properly, save the changes and click Place and Route. This concludes the FPJ configuration. Now let's start the Cortex-M3 CPU programming. Download the firmware package from our demo doc. You will see the MCU SDK download on goinsemi.com here. Unzip the firmware package and locate the SPI folder located within the Keel Ref Design folder. Here you will need to add the HW drivers. As far as the detailed code SPI functions, that can be found within the demo doc here. Now we have completed the work for the FPGA and Cortex-M3 CPU. The FS file is generated in the FPGA project synthesis and the bin file is generated within the Cortex-M3 CPU project. Next, we just need to download it. Open GoIn EDA Programmer, select the correct device and choose the operation option Firmware Erase Program with the access mode being MCU mode. The programming option will be as follows and the binary file will be the CM3 bin file we created. Make sure your board is connected and then click Program. Now the LCD should start to display the test function in screen. 
indicating that the driver is normal and the Cortex M3 CPU is working normally. Now we will be migrating the operating system RT thread to the CPU. Let's download the RT thread nano 3.1.3 kernel source code and copy it to the project directory. Go ahead and copy the source code to this project. Add the source files in the keel project by clicking the manage project options button. Add the kernel source code as shown here. Then add the files of libcpu within the correct folder. Then add the component used in the debug. Up next we'll be adding a header file. Open the options for target spy, navigate to the C, C++ tab, and then click the three dots where you can choose which path to include. Next let's come out the Ystick hard fault and append SV interrupt. This is found within the gw1ns4c it.c file and the board.c file pictured here. After completing the above steps, compile the project, download it to the development board, then RT thread will start to run on your dev board. Along with this tutorial, we have several other completed demo projects which you can use with your Ministar board. Make sure to check out these projects and see what you can alter within the projects to get your Ministar board to do other cool functions. If you run into any bugs or snags while going through any of the demos, be sure to post on the issues page for the Ministar board. This will make sure we haven't missed anything or if there is an issue, we can go ahead and fix it. I also encourage you to post your project experience on our Reddit page so you can share your findings and check out what others are able to do with their mini star boards. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the GW1NSR demo tutorial.